On this episode of The Brilliant Brand Show, I take Andrea's question as we talk about how do they take the vision that they have for a lot of different ideas and actually start to get stuff done and not let people down. Welcome to The Brilliant Brands Show. I'm Justin Keller, former accidental marketer and creative director turned church branding expert and entrepreneur. Each episode, I'm unpacking the strategies that I've used to help churches all across America make their story their brand visuals, and their marketing so brilliantly clear that it's impossible to ignore them. And now, it's your turn. I hope you're ready to challenge the way you see things, rebel against complacency, comfort, and conformity, and find your untold brilliance. Now, let the show begin. Welcome to this episode of The Brilliant Brand Show. It's good to be with you here today. I'm Justin Keller, your host. And as always, I want to start out by thanking you for being a part of this show and then let me be a part of what you're doing there as a church when it comes to your branding and your marketing. Now, on this show, every single episode, it's my goal that I help give you practical tips and ideas on how to make your brand visuals, your brand message, and your marketing so brilliantly clear that it's impossible to ignore it. And on this episode today, I'm going to do that by answering a question that came in from Andrea, and we're going to talk through the answers in just a second, but let's go ahead and listen to Andrea's question. Hi, my name is Andrea, and I'm calling from Dothan, Alabama. We have a lot of vision at our church for different things that we can do for branding and marketing and reaching our community, but a lot of this stuff falls through, so I was wondering what practical steps we could take to make sure that things actually start to happen instead of planning big things and then letting people down. Thank you. Andrea, thank you for that question. I think this is a struggle, not just for you at your church. I think it's a lot of churches, especially if you are a church that has a visionary pastor and just a great team that's coming up with big ideas and trying to reach more people. I mean, I have this issue even inside of our business on how do you know what ideas to actually move forward on? Uh, And I think sometimes what happens is, You know, I know me personally, I will throw out an idea to the team, tell them this is what we're going to do, and then I haven't thought through the details and things fall through the cracks, the ideas don't happen, and sometimes you can be left saying, oh, just another idea, is this actually going to happen? And so what I want to do today here on the show is help you think through just three, I think, practical ways that you can hopefully stop over-promising and under-delivering and actually follow through with what you guys are communicating that you're going to do there as a church and even just helping decide what ideas do we move forward with. And so the first thing is this, you have to filter and prioritize. And so I know that sounds like a no-brainer for most organizations, but it's not practiced as much as it is spoken and talked about. And the the problem that we run into is when every idea is important or when everything is important, nothing is important. I know that's paraphrased or even maybe stolen from somebody else who said it, but that is uh, the essence of what I'm saying is that when everything's important, nothing is important. And so you, the first thing you have to do is you have to filter and decide how important is this, and then don't be in a hurry to bring that idea to life. I think that would be the second thing is that when we come up with an idea, it's easy for us to just jump into, this has to happen now. What you need to be able to do as an organization, as a leadership team, is to be able to take a look back, take a big deep breath, and look at the big picture and say, all right, in the grand scheme of things, is this the most important? And so you might be looking at coming into a Christmas season or Easter season or just a big busy season, and you're going to have to get selective on what you can do, what you have the manpower for, the resources for. And so those are just practical ways that I would measure, can we actually accomplish this? I'd start to look at, okay, what's the most important thing right now in this season for us? And maybe that season could be every quarter. So I like to think in quarters for business and even for churches, you could be saying, what are the most important things this quarter for us to accomplish? And what are the resources that are allocated to that already? So when you start to identify that, you're going to be able to see, do we have any margin left? And that will help you either decide, okay, we need to either outsource some things to get this done, um, or we just need to wait. And so by just prioritizing and breaking it down by quarters, 
what I think it'll allow you to do is to say, all right, inside of this quarter, that idea is great, but it doesn't line up with what our main objective is. Let's push that back. So let's not be in a hurry to get this thing done right now. It's a great idea, but it's bad timing. And we need to wait till we have, it fits inside of the main priority for us as an organization. So it gets, it doesn't you know fail. It gets the priority it deserves. And then it will get the manpower and the resources that it needs to be successful. And so the there's nothing worse than, having a really great idea at the wrong time because what's going to happen is it's going to get lower priority with manpower, resources, and so on, and it's not going to ever become what it could have became. And ultimately, that's typically attached to it's not going to make the impact that it could have made if you had waited just a little bit. And then the next thing is this, that you need to limit what you do. Now, you might say, Justin, if we already filtered and we already prioritized everything, that will limit what we do. Not necessarily, because if you're like me and you are aggressive at going after big ideas, you're not going to call it good at saying, okay, that list of 20, that's only, we're going to do five of those things now. That's hard to do because even when I prioritize my list of 20 things in this quarter to get done, I know maybe that only 10 of those things are realistic and I still try to push for those 20 things. What I've had to do is just say, pause. It goes back into that other concept and that other idea I just told you about that don't be in a hurry to get everything done, I have to hit pause and say, wait, I can be aggressive and probably get 10 of these done, but there's still 10 of these 20 that they just need to, they need to wait. And so I'm going to limit what I do right now so that my focus can be on these ideas. They can be done well and we can move things forward, not let people down and actually deliver on what we say. And so you have to filter, you have to not be in a hurry to get things done and then you need to limit what you do. And the last one is really important and that is limit what you communicate. So when you have an idea inside of your organization, maybe the leadership team, you come up with something that you think can move the organization forward, it doesn't mean you have to go start casting vision right away. All you're going to do if you try to cast vision too early for an idea that you haven't thought out all the way and you know how this is going to get accomplished, you're just going to confuse and you're going to leave people wondering how the heck are we supposed to do this, especially if you have this long list of other things that are supposed to be getting done at the same time. And what is ultimately going to happen is you're going to lose the buy-in that you need later for that idea. And so you need to limit what you communicate so that when you do communicate it, you've thought through the details, you know how this can accomplish, you know that you've got the resources for it, and you know that you're not going to let people down. And I'd say, Andrea, that those are four of the things that you need to do in order to make sure that a lot of the ideas that you have, the big vision that you guys are casting, that those ideas get done, they get implemented, and then people aren't left let down wondering, will this ever actually happen? I see this uh, very often when it comes to building projects or different things like that for churches, capital campaigns, and so on, is that they cast this big vision for outreach or something that they're trying to do, and but they've never even had the meeting to say, is this possible? And they haven't thought through the details, and so they communicate way too fast and try to cast that vision, and we end up over-promising and under-delivering all with the intention of just casting vision and engaging people and moving them toward our purpose. But it can do more damage if you communicate too soon. So those are the four things that uh, I would say practically you could do right now, which is filter and prioritize, and then don't be in a hurry to get things done, uh, and then limit what you do, and then last, just limit what you communicate. So I hope that helped. And if you have a question out there and you're listening right now and you'd like to ask me about anything to do with branding and marketing for your church, go to circle50.com and 50 is spelled out F-I-F-T-Y and then forward slash Q and the letter N A. So circle50.com forward slash Q and A. And you can send me your question. And then in return for sending me your question, I'm going to go ahead and give you a digital copy of my book, Rebel Brands, 10 New Rules for Building a Brilliant Church Brand. And so the next episode that I'm going to get into, we're going to talk about vision, this topic of vision and the role that it plays in building your brand, in what you communicate as a church, in your marketing. And I'm really excited about that episode because I I believe that it's important to have a great vision for your organization, but I want to talk about the role that vision should have inside of your organization, your communication, and your marketing. And so uh, for now, it would mean a lot if you would go ahead and rate, review the show, subscribe to it, and continue to share it with others. And I love getting your feedback. Send me your emails, justin at justinkeller.com. 
Your feedback means everything to me. So thank you so much for, for that. And just thank you for taking the time to listen here today. So until next time, make today great. Thank you for listening to today's episode. The Brilliant Brand Show is powered by Circle 50 Creative. You can learn more about how we help ministries solve critical ministry moments with the right message, brand visuals, and strategies at circle50.com.